how's, how's everything been going with you guys as far as, uh, you know, the situation in the world? I, luckily, like, uh, composers kind of had a bit of a runway, so we're fortunate. Like, once production start down, uh, shut down, we were able to kind of keep working for a while. Yeah. Um, because things were shot and needed to be scored. And we also did a video game together. Um, but yeah, it's been it's been crazy. We're used to working away from each other too. So yeah. that's, that part's been all right. Yeah, that was one of the things I wanted to talk about was sort of like, um, how did you both get involved with Cobra Kai? And, and have you guys been working together on other projects? Or is this sort of like, you know, how did you guys sort of all get involved with the oh, Cobra Kai project? We, we go way back. Uh, 2000. Uh, Zach corrected me the other day. It's 2012, not not 2013. Oh, uh, so it's been a while. We, yeah, yeah, yeah. We've known each other forever. We met because uh, we both worked for Christoph Beck, uh, and grew a, uh, a budding friendship and a creative uh, joint venture there. And uh, I don't know. We left. Uh, Let's see what what are our steps from uh, Chris to Cobra Guy. We, we I guess we stopped working with Chris around like 2015. Uh, he kind of went on like a sabbatical for a little bit, and so like all of us who were there, um, and at that point, like Zach and I were like both kind of doing our own things at the same time. So it was just kind of like a nice like uh, band breakup, <laughs> a little bit. And then uh, let's see, uh, we we did another show called Sing It which was on YouTube Red, um, that was very like 30 Rock-esque. And I, because we did, and we did it together, uh, just because it was like a fun um, opportunity to work together, that project involved a lot of like song production, like covers, um, which was pretty fun. And we saw like a news blurb in Deadline that uh, YouTube Red um, was ordering Cobra Kai. And we just thought like, hey, we just did a YouTube Red show. Like, that sounds like something we would freaking crush, although we did not know anything about it. I mean, there was no info about it. There was no, there, we didn't know that, like, the, the, you know, Ralph and Billy were going to be. Yeah. Like, I mean, like, for all we knew, it was going to be some kind of, like, recast, like, thing or, like, an origin story or, like, like who like knows? A complete what. reboot or something. Yeah. Sort of yeah, yeah. Yeah. Like a reboot. Um, and uh, so we, we just kind of, like, made a reel and like literally cold called our way in there or like had our agent do it on our behalf and you know a lot of times you do that kind of stuff and it doesn't really go anywhere but the timing like worked out perfectly where suddenly um the showrunners john josh and hayden were like like listens to the reel and we're like hey these guys seem awesome bring them in for a meeting and so suddenly our cold call just like turned into like a meeting for it and we had the meeting and then we you know we got hired like that afternoon right afterwards like it was just like a great fit when we got in the room yeah with them. i should and say we, it i should i'll add it it never happens like that ever yeah yeah it's never. like how you always you always hope that like somehow you can like kind of steer the wheels of destiny into a direction that you want but you never actually know if that's ever going to happen it's like oh well you know but the cool thing is it's showing that you guys wanted it went for it and made it happen yeah. so that's super cool yeah. You mentioned the uh, the video game that it just recently came out, right? It came out in like the end yeah, of a couple of weeks ago. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I, I was I was listening listening to a few of the tracks, and I I I really love what you guys did, and I really love that kind of like retro video game feel to it. I like it. It was like listening to music from old Nintendo Super Nintendo games, but wonderful, oh, yeah. sounding mission yeah. accomplished, way cooler. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, because like when you listen to those old you know, old soundtracks, the, the cool thing about them is like the music is, you know, like even though it's 8-bit, it sounds really cool, but it's always like, man, if that was like with like an orchestra or like a real band, it would be even cooler. And like listening to the soundtrack, my first thought was like, that sounds like those old games, but you know, like cool sounding guitar tones and drums, it sounds all big and, and heavy. Yeah. But like, I really loved a lot of the, like the guitar solos and harmonies on the keyboard and stuff kind of like reminded me of old like, shrapnel shred guitar guys i don't know if if uh, like what your influences are zach as far as guitar but it kind of reminded me of like the old 80s guitar shred guys with you know i'm into them sense. yeah <laughs> yeah i'm into them yeah who, who are some of your influences on, on guitar i'd say like uh well i'm trying to think like i'm i'm incredibly bad at at um 
I'm not even going to try to like, there's a lot of like Japanese fusion like groups that have like a lot of that shreddy guitar, especially as it relates to like video games. Cause a lot of them went to score video games. And I think that influenced that sound, particularly like this very Japanese, like mid nineties, like early nineties, mm. like sound. And there's a band like Cassiopeia. Um, and I'm blanking on the guitarist name right now. Who's like incredible. And I'm always listening to that band. Um, but yeah, like other guitarists, I mean, like, uh, Tosin Abasi is like I know oh, Leo is very into Tosin Abasi too. Like I love, oh, yeah. I love that kind of like newer that newer sound that's very like percussive. Um, Martin Freeman, who's in Megadeth and had a very um, like post Megadeth uh, shred career, like yes. in Japan, and he's and he's uh, he lives he's there great. now. Right? He I mean, lives there now. Speaks, he lives there. Speaks fluent is... Japanese. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> totally. Yeah. Um, Ingve Malmsteen, obviously, and then of course Eddie Van Halen, which I was like very emotional when Eddie Van Halen passed away. I didn't even realize like how emotional yeah. I get. Yeah, that really that really hit a lot of the guitar and just music community because yeah, like, everyone. Yeah. If you play guitar or some kind of fashion, like you're probably influenced by him in some way, either like if not directly through him, like through someone else, because he was just kind of like such an iconic player. Totally, and it's yeah. There's not many other musicians that kind of like own a sound like that. Um, yeah. I also love like Dragon Force, Herman Lee and Sam Solomon guitars. I mean, they, and they're very influenced by video games too. Like I, mm -hmm. I, I'm specifically thinking about this type, this kind of like intersection between like shred and video game music. Um, and, uh, it, it was really a, a fun opportunity because you don't get a lot of opportunities to be able to write music like that. And obviously I know Leo has a major guitar influence, even as not a guitar player, if you want yeah, to talk I'm, about. <laughs> I'm not a guitar, I am not a guitar player, but I am obsessed with Pat Metheny and have been since I was like a freshman in high school. Um, so, I mean, that was like my entire high school was basically just like listening to Pat Metheny and like transcribing Pat Metheny and like arranging Pat Metheny charts for like my high school big band. Like, oh God, the dude is just like freaking unbelievable. Um, and uh, you can you can hear some of that in this uh, game too, because a lot of that crosses over with like the Japanese jazz fusion thing that, that Zach was talking about. Mm -hmm. um, so yeah, that game was a blast. It was, I mean, you definitely like identified the big uh, what we were trying to do, which is make it sound like one of those retro side scroller games. Um, which what I mean, those games are like a, were a huge influence on how we approach the score to the show. Cobra Kai. It was, you know, the, the, just like the beat em up sound, uh, what was in some of our earliest conversations with the showrunners was like kind of where we wanted to draw some influence from. And so it was really like coming full circle to then like doing like a side project on Cobra Kai that's like still in the universe, but like totally unrelated. Like there's no musical crossover in, in terms mm -hmm. of like themes or anything, but we just got to like, give back to the to the sound that, that then we like borrowed from in in making it so I, it was it was very cool and and fun and creatively fulfilling yeah it sounds like like it was a lot of fun to write like i think a lot of times you know yeah. when people are working on music for stuff it's kind of like you know all right you know this needs to have a certain feel or this needs to be serious or something but like this like just listening to the music it sounded like it was fun to write i'm sure you guys probably you know do you guys write a lot of that sort of together or do you kind of like bounce ideas back and forth just through sessions both. Or plan or? Both, it, yeah. depends on, it depends on the project and it depends we we're we are pretty collaborative i would say like mm -hmm. in our it, it's surprising how how effective like sending things back and forth can can be and do yeah you guys both you guys both work in cubase I know. Yeah, we yes. yeah, yeah, yeah. Cool. I do too. We we basically have we have kind of different templates, but we have like the same systems. Like everything's kind of like if you watch Leo's video with uh, Sound Iron, I, that's basically like watching my video. <laughs> it's oh, yeah. almost the same thing. I will maybe a little more guitar stuff um, set up, but like uh, I also will say that uh, it's very rare that you get to work on a project where everyone just like lets you kind of do whatever you want. Yeah. So like Game Mill and Flux, who, who are the game designers, like I give them a lot of credit and thank them because they really, their big note was like, we want it to sound like Cobra Kai, but by nature of us doing it, it was going to sound like Cobra Kai. So right. what, like, whatever, whatever, we, we, whatever write, we did. Whatever we write by default sounds like Cobra Kai. And I remember like, 
when, <laughs> when we sent some of the first stuff, because some of the like first things we wrote are very kind of like, is this going to fly? Like, it, it sounds like really like a 90s video game. And they were super down. I mean, I think they, they got the references. Um, and, you know, we got the references that they were going for. So it just worked out. So there's no real musical themes from the show brought into the game. The game's no, not its even. own thing. Not a, it's not just, at all. It's totally its own thing. Nice. It's its own Cobra Kai extended universe situation. Well, that's cool. I, it I, kind of lets you do it, you know, approach. It absolutely. In a way. Absolutely. I was just gonna add, we really consider ourselves like the fun guys, and so like <laughs> it's great when uh, people listen to the music and like it sounds like. Like, not only is it, like, fun music, but it sounds like it was fun to write and, like, yeah. fun to make. Because, like, we put a high premium on fun. Like, if we're not having <laughs> fun, the, uh, the things fall apart very quickly. <laughs> yeah, it's easy to, to want to, or, like, if you have a certain idea and you start taking it too serious, you just start, all right, crumbling up, throw it out. All right, let's try this again. Eh, you know, you get, like, you know, you get too over-analytical about it. And, you know, it did. I think it definitely does represent that fun aspect that you guys shared writing it because my first yeah my first listening to it i was just like this is cool like because i'm a guitar player like i grew up playing in metal bands and all into the shred guys all the guys you mentioned you know are dudes that i look up to and mm. and uh so it's like anytime i ever get a chance to like drop in some like guitar shred on something and it's like it's automatically going to be fun because that's the stuff that like, <laughs> kind of like hits yeah. me in my, my childhood you know yeah you would like scoring for cobra kai <laughs> Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. I just like listen to him. Like, man, that's cool. Like, you know, especially when you <laughs> get a chance you. to just like bring out those influences that you don't maybe normally get to, or you know. Yeah, and, and can... like credit to the showrunners, they let us yeah. do that. Like, it's very cool. It's very cool. Yeah, but at the same time, like, like you guys really sort of tap in, like going into back to Cobra Kai, like you really do sort of tap into that essence of Karate Kid without sort of like stepping on it too much, you know, like all like the, like the training montage scenes and all that stuff, mm -hmm. like it just like nailed it, you know, and then, but like for the really like emotional scenes, like I'm, you know, no spoilers on here or nothing, but like immediately after I finished it, I hit up Leah and I was just like, dude, it's so good. Like my girlfriend was like bawling when she was like, <laughs> yeah. watching it. Yeah. She was like, oh no, no, oh my God. Like, and we we're both uh, yeah. like, so like wrapped into it because like, you know, the music and just the action scenes and everything. Like, I really think they did a great job with a lot of the cinematography. I was like watching some of the behind the scenes stuff and it's really cool how much like mm. attention to detail they put into like all the camera moves and, you know, just like switching out stunt actors and putting them back in. Like, it's really yeah, yeah. Cool. I think like the key to Cobra Kai, this, this goes beyond the music, but like every, like, when you approach like making it, the reason I think that it is like so successful and people respond so well to it is that everything is extremely genuine in how you, mm -hmm. you approach it. So, and that thus like kind of taps into, uh, the, you know, the, the genuineness of the original Karate Kid movie, which is like so genuine that it's cheesy as balls. Uh, yeah. <laughs> but like, and that's what people love about it. It taps into those like, you know, really heartfelt uh, core emotional, things we all have emotions emotional things uh, emotional things yeah mm -hmm. emotional things and you know like you, you brought up the training montages which is like i think a really good example for how like we do that um like our our window into that because like we like i think we even said in our first meeting on cobra kai that like what is really exciting to us about like doing the show would be to write training montages like unironic like every not as every a joke show yeah. you do like someone wants to do an 80s training montage is like a joke and this time it's like no 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 we're just gonna do miguel's training montage <laughs> and there's no joke about it like yeah, this, this is serious as genuine, He's seriously this is as genuine a training montage as, as you can do and like yes there are like elements of the palette that are self-aware and a lot of elements of the show that are self-aware but like at no point in the show is the music itself like a joke it's just like genuinely doing it in this world and i think that's why like the show really packs a freaking emotional punch yeah like my first thought when i heard about it was because uh, i was never i never really watched too much like of all, all the karate kid movies but I really like the angle that they approached it with like Johnny being kind of like that, you know, when you hear about the story of like the, the high school quarterback, who's like the popular guy. And then like gets out and you see him, you see him 10 years later and he's working at a gas station and you're like, Oh, like 
what happened? Like they kind of approached it in that way of like, yep. he's, not yeah. the, he's not the cool dude anymore. And he's like, you know, struggling and working just like everyone else. But it really shows that sort of, um, you know, you build that emotional connection with him because it's kind of like, he's not, you know, the jerk anymore. So it's, uh, and that influenced the score because we were not approaching the score for Cobra Kai um, as necessarily Bill Conti scoring Cobra Kai. We have a lot of references to Bill Conti and, you know, eventually the seasons go forward, like it becomes more cinematic. And of course, like we have a scoring background, like, we, you know, we work on, on big like orchestra movies and like we studied that. So we have all that, but we also have like these influence of like, 80s hair metal and 80s you know and like synth pop and all that stuff and we knew going into it that like okay we're gonna be in johnny's perspective like what is this dude still listening to from 1984 like what is like that was a very uh like informative uh a lot of like we really ran with that basically Mm -hmm. and you can you can tell (laughs) <laughs> yeah i love the part when he was kind of like you know like what like what are you listening to don't you have anything cool on there don't you have like Bonley crew or something or oh yeah actually right. you know he's playing rat and he's like oh yeah i was listening to a bunch of like <laughs> hair hair metal exactly band. exactly yeah um, the all, all the actors in the show have terrific chemistry which like really helps tell the story i mm-hmm. think yeah the yeah with the writing they really did a good job it's like it, I feel like with like with that stuff, it's really easy to to kind of do it wrong or try to be too funny. Like like some of the responses or like some of the stuff that like Johnny will say, it's like so dry or so like caveman response. But he seems so dead serious. Like it's like that's the thing I I thought was super funny. Absolutely, like, he just seems like just like regular dude. Like what like like when he's like send it to the internet. I was like. <laughs> I was dying. <laughs> that, that that line is favorites. just freaking blown up. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. But just like stuff like that, it's just it's just so good because it's like it's not trying too hard. It's just like it seems like genuine, like real it's stuff. It's super genuine to the character. Yeah. yeah. I wanted to talk about uh how uh back in 2019 you guys performed some of this stuff live. And uh, I was I was just kind of curious how how that all came about and what made you guys want to rock out on stage and play some of these songs. Um, part of it was, uh, part of it was we were thinking about, it was like partially kind of like an Emmy, like a for your consideration type of event. Sometimes like people do screenings of, of, uh, of episodes or movies or whatever. And, um, but we were thinking like, why don't we just do a concert? And we and, and the music lends itself very well to being performed live. Um, but we had to, the biggest challenge was taking, you know, these minute and a half to two minute cues and turning them into listenable songs. So we spent a few months um, like brainstorming and working songs out um, out of these cues. And we got an amazing band together. We played at the Whiskey A Go-Go, which for those of you who don't know, is like one of the like trashiest clubs. The spots. Yeah. (laughs) Like like it's 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 where Johnny, you know, would would go in the 80s, but then just like stick around and like wouldn't stop going. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So it was it was perfect. It was a perfect, perfect, perfect place. Um, and we were playing with amazing musicians and, um, it informed kind of stuff that we wrote for season three, which I know Leo has like other things you can talk about with that. Oh yeah. The, I, well, like it it was interesting because we, um, like Zach said, we, we spent a long chunk of time kind of reinterpreting a lot of our own music. Like some of the tracks are like, we're very much ready to play. Let's just like extend them, add an extra guitar solo, like type of thing. But a lot of them, because the score is so like hybridy with like programmed synth parts and like live band parts and then like orchestra parts often happening at the same time, we kind of were like, okay, how should we play this live? And there's a couple uh, tracks we did that are like totally transformed uh, or like real, you know, just kind of like musical extensions. And then, you know, in the process, you like write a new bridge for something or a B section and it feels like it's always been there, but it's never actually been in the show. And so then like approaching season three, working on that material for all those months kind of gave us new ideas for like, hey, we could reharmonize this melody this way. Hey, that melody, like that sounds great on that instrument. Like, oh, hey, you, we, you know, the, the B section I'm talking about, like the mashing up those ideas. Like we, it, it was just like kind of a great, um, I don't know, canvas to just like, puke out a lot of like development ideas that you don't always like when you're in the middle of the season and like 
you know, the, the, the schedule is like pushing you on and you're like writing, um, you know, a huge amount of being a composer is like channeling your creative energy and like making sure you can really focus and do your best stuff. But it was almost like a, we had all, we, we got this like bonus time to like, you know, do our homework with our own material, um, which, which was really great. Like I, I, I can't wait till we can do another live performance so we can like develop some new tracks and like, or like take some things and like, uh, change them. Like I always kind of think of it like it's the, the live set could be like very much a work in progress where like, you know, I always like you go to a concert and like an artist will just play some like intro to something that you like don't recognize until you're like six minutes into it. And then you realize it's all just an intro for like that song you love. And, and like, then you like realize afterwards, like I, I, I see it kind of like that. It's like a very, uh, it's like this parallel uh, way to channel the music. Um, we played it also in Spain at the Mosma Film Music Festival, which is like a in Malaga, which is like a pretty big uh, film music festival in Europe. And that sort of, the, it all kind of came to be because when we started talking to the Spain people, um, we were like, oh man, we like, we can't just like show up in Spain and play this for the first time. Like we should play it here in in LA it's, and, and so then it kind of became like a whiskey concert that we took to Spain. Um, but that was sort of the impetus for it also. When I COVID mean, once, once freaking COVID is over, I really want to do Cobra Kai live at the Greek. That's my, plan. <laughs> <laughs> I know what well, we want to do. I think also like we would, yeah, we would love to tour. It's funny now, like just, I definitely want to, with all South this America renewed, tour. yeah. With this like renewed interest and in, like with Spotify stats and with Apple music stats, you can see like all the different cities that are listening to it. And like our, I mean, it just completely blew up once Netflix hit. So like, I mean, we got, we got like 15 times more listeners than what we did That's from awesome. a year ago. So like we would love to tour and we'd love to play with an orchestra one day too. Well, that's, that's a yeah. little more logistical of an event thing, but. That's so. cool. So, so all the people that you, that you had playing live with you, are those just like musician friends of yours or did you guys like reach out to like find people or. Those are musician friends of ours and almost all of them played on the soundtrack as well. So yeah. Oh, that's cool. It was, it was an easy, yeah. uh, easy translation. Craig, I have to say you have a great radio voice. I feel like you should like <laughs> freaking have, you should just like have a couple hours on like KPCC. <laughs> it's the power of the microphone. So, yeah. Like, <laughs> I just, I just, I put a preset on here. I put a uh, radio voice guy. Just <laughs> yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. My, my voice is normally really high pitch. No, <laughs> No, that would is that a, uh, a, a UAD uh, Unison plugin? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, so as far as the upcoming season three, which is coming out in January, early January, January 8th, right? yeah. So January 8th. Is, uh, I know I'm, I'm not going to try and pester you guys with spoilers or nothing, but like as far as the music, is there any kind of new elements that you brought in to... Uh... Yeah, it's epic as shit. It's so freaking I think that's, epic. I think that's like, the exact text that, that you responded to me. I was like, I was like, man, what's, up? I was like what's up with season three, man? Blah, blah. And you're like, it's epic as shit. That's yeah, there's, like, there's only <laughs> so many. Yeah, there's only so many ways to pitch it. The uh, I'm sure anyone who watches the show can see that like the scope uh, of the show as the story develops, like, I don't know, there's like a sense of cinema and grandeur there. And like, season three follows in that format and uh it, it gave us a lot of opportunities to to you know epic it up yeah. which like i mean season two and season one are already pretty epic but we we feel this is our uh, peak epicness so far truly we really like uh we were quite exhausted when it was when it was all over <laughs> yeah but like sure. musically like i think there's gonna be there's a lot of new stuff musically that we got to introduce um like Daniel goes to Okinawa, which is not a spoiler, like that is like a known thing. Daniel goes to Okinawa. And we, one of the things that we did was uh, ordered this um, instrument called the Sanshin, which is kind of like a shamisen, like it's a Japanese like banjo kind of equivalent. It's made out of um, uh, kind of like a snake skin. Um, it's almost like a drum, like, like a banjo. And it has that very kind of like tinny sound. It's three strings, fretless. Um, and we got it from Okinawa, like the, from the Okinawa Sanction shop. So they sent it to us. We got that on the score. Um, what other like fun music things do we have in store for people? 
I, the deeper we get into the show, like the more we we like to embrace just like the mythology of all the characters and like the webs of characters and the more we learn about the characters and obviously like Daniel's going to Okinawa, like we're going to learn some stuff about characters and like <laughs> there we, you know, like you, it, it's like one of those things like you, you get deep into a story and you have more material to then like work with. I, I don't know. We both like that kind of like, cinematic thematic scoring um and 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 so like you know it's just an outlet to to go ham um mm-hmm. but yeah well, it's, it's cool because like you kind of build these little blocks and over time you can kind of like pick and choose different ones and you know expand on the thematic material and you know you know taking it to more of an orchestral thing or or a more band type thing and, and that's the kind of cool thing is like as you go on you have so much like previous things to kind of springboard off of or expand on or or even add new things and stuff like that absolutely so, that, so that's cool especially like add you know whenever you get a chance to like add in new instruments or if there's like a new character introduced and you can kind of you know start fresh from there or you know or connect things and stuff like that Super exactly cool. uh going back to the video game was there anything about the process of of working on the music for the game that you found you know either not necessarily challenging or just like different or anything that you learned from or you know i don't know um how much video game scoring you guys have done or is this like your first none <laughs> not, not a lot but but i'm a huge game like i play a lot of games um leo doesn't used to play more games but he doesn't play as yeah. games now. yeah but same. um it would be yeah. it would be dangerous for me to have like a console like too close to like i would just wouldn't get anything done yeah, that's, like, hey, that's I'm just gonna load up my, my Cubase template. I'll just play a little bit of games. You're like, All right, yeah, exactly. No, 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 exactly. Like, you just, it's wow. you know, it's a black hole. It's a really enjoyable wow. black hole. You two are you but. two are lucky because that is my black hole reality. Um, but I would say that the <laughs> challenge, uh, first of all, definitely as like Leo said earlier, we we were we did not use any of the Cobra Kai material, so it was all brand new material. It was a blank slate. Um, sometimes it's a lot harder to write music as like a song. Like these are essentially songs that were loopable songs. And sometimes it's a lot harder when you're not scoring something, um, especially like when all you do is score to like take a step back and like just create a song in its own kind of universe is is challenging. Um, finding like the new palette, how did we want to separate the video game score from the show score and a lot of that came down to just the synths that we used. Like um, the synth of choice, really, for this game was the uh, the wave shaper, the um, Korg. Korg and and our wave station. Sorry, wave station. Yeah. Um, and that was really like our big, the big change that we that we had. We don't use that synth a lot for the show, but we use like the Korg M1. Um, so like, yeah, figuring out what the palette was like developing like kind of just a new, a new language that that kept the ethos of the show and then also just of course like another challenge just as always was time like it was just a lot of music and not that much time and there was covid had just started um so we had to you know figure out how to record remotely mix remotely um so yeah it was kind of all that it was definitely a good first video game experience in some ways because um it wasn't like a, I don't know, extremely complicated logistically in terms of how the music interacts with the game. Like it just kind of loops. Right. Um, we did do one pretty cool thing, which is there's a couple tracks that have like slightly different, ver- like it's two different versions of the same track that either have like more Cobra Kai influenced sounds or more Miyagi Do influenced sounds. Because when you're playing, um, uh, y- you get to pick kind of which Which dojo dojo. you're going to follow the story of and there's two parallel stories so then there's just like a couple tracks that have multiple versions which is like a pretty fun right so if you're playing as cobra kai dojo the like you might hear a guitar solo whereas if you're playing as miyagi do you might hear more of like flutes or like Mm -hmm. like synth flutes or something like that i actually just beat it on cobra kai uh on cobra kai mode so now i'm playing on miyagi do (laughs) braggart you just gotta be you just gotta be (laughs) careful man because then you're just gonna end up playing that game just gonna get all. I and, and start, I mean, this is my life. It's it's my life anyway. I play I play a lot of games, <laughs> especially during COVID. That's cool. Yeah, I was I was that that's cool aspect about video games or video game music, especially like you know if there's like certain characters that get introduced, like certain things will drop and other sounds might come in. Like if there's yeah. like a threat, all of a sudden there's little like 
sound creeps in and like it just seems like it makes the the music writing fun because there'll be like multiple layers of different stuff right and- and and that I think is more appropriate for like um, open world type games. Like I was just playing Ghost of Tsushima, which is a lot more like that. Where like you're, you know, you're, it's like a open world. You can go wherever and then, you know, at a certain point you hit an enemy and the music will shift. Whereas this game, because it is, it's linear, this game is linear. You're like literally going from left to right and that the environments don't change. So all we needed to focus on was looping. And I imagine that there's a lot more that goes into game scoring um when it's when it's more of like a modern kind of like open world game Mm. so all the music you guys just wrote the songs no real like imagery or visuals or gameplay or nothing they they sent us like character designs and stuff which was kind of nice to just see like the tone of and uh, but it was mostly just like kind of an enjoyment factor to be like oh nice this is what like the baddie looks like like mm-hmm. <laughs> like taking Sweet. the goons from like the beach battle in season two episode four and like seeing the goons as like they're such goo like they're such video game goons already like they didn't <laughs> even have to change much and seeing the animation we were like this is so funny yeah and we knew exactly what the tone was yeah it's like when yeah. playing those old like streets of rage games where like the little thugs exactly come out exactly. And just, like, exactly. Trash exactly cans at them <laughs> exactly yeah. that's that's literally that's that's what their reference was with streets of rage oh that's cool that's awesome yeah um well we're very excited for the season three album we are currently working on that just set um, it off for mastering for mastering and uh yeah i mean there's just going to be a lot of crazy things that happen in this upcoming season yeah yeah i know i know myself and a lot of other people are uh we're waiting for it it's gonna be cool. <laughs> that's awesome that's very cool i like that everyone is like waiting now like i i don't know there's whole the whole show has taken on like such a new life since uh like august i guess it was when it came out on netflix and it's just like really exciting to see like everyone excited for the next season yeah i'm, I'm really excited for you guys i'm sure it was you know really awesome to hear that netflix picked it up i mean that's like I think what everyone kind of hopes for, especially, I mean, because it seemed really popular even when it was on the YouTube premium, but it know, was Netflix has just exploded. So that's, that's really yeah. awesome. That's cool, man. Well, uh, you know, it's really awesome getting to chat with you guys. Cool seeing you again, Leo, and nice meeting you, Zach. Oh, and, yeah. Uh, um, yeah. Excited for everything. I'm definitely going to be uh, firing up that Cobra Kai, uh, the, the video game soundtrack right after this. So awesome, excellent. Man. Thanks, Greg. Excellent. Thank you. So yeah, uh, really appreciate it. Thanks for you guys' time, and uh, yeah, we'll see you see you guys soon. Hopefully, I'll get to Absolutely. see you guys live when uh, everything gets more back to normal. Oh yeah, for sure. Awesome. All right. Sure. Well, yeah. All right. You guys Thanks, have Craig. a great time, and yeah, see you guys later. Peace, man. Talk soon. Okay.